Hi, I'm Shane Downey coming to you live from the GBTA broadcast studio on location in Toronto. And I am joined today by Cassandra Conacher, Senior Immigration Consultant with Newland Chase. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you. It's great to be here in Toronto and seeing the convention. And I'm really excited about this because I would like to talk a little bit about what top trends you see in Canadian immigration that we should be paying attention to. Absolutely. So generally speaking, we're seeing a more open Canada as far as immigration policy is concerned. You know, we're seeing different pilot projects uh, be extended for greater lengths of time, such as the Atlantic Immigration Pilot. We're seeing the introduction of new programs like the Agri Foods Immigration Pilot. So just innovative programs coming out that are really trying to facilitate the entry of skilled people into Canada. We've seen the Global Skills Strategy become a permanent fixture in the Canadian immigration landscape as opposed to a pilot project. So we're seeing a general trend towards openness. Um, that aside, I would say we are also seeing a hardening in some aspects to areas that are kind of gray as far as immigration is concerned. We're seeing them getting grayer. Mm -hmm. So things like business travel versus whether you need a work permit are becoming more of a hot button issue. So um, as far as immigration is concerned, you know, we're going to see increased immigration numbers. Canada is a country that we need immigration in order to continue growing. Right. So we'll, we'll continue to see that happen throughout 2019 and see new programs being rolled out. Good. No, it certainly is. A, I mean, it's it's on everybody's mind. It is right now. Absolutely. So it's so. And the other issue that's really on every, everybody's minds are duty of care responsibilities mm -hmm. and what travel buyers have to be aware of when it comes to immigration. I would say a couple of things come to mind with that, and it it goes back to that discussion of business travel versus the need for a work permit. Uh, we're seeing more and more travelers getting stuck at the border thinking, you know, I'm just coming into Canada or just going into the U.S. for a business meeting. And when they're pushed for more details, the officer discovers that, no, actually you need a work authorization to be in the country. So uh, what we're seeing is really successful with a lot of companies is implementing some kind of program where uh, their employees cannot book travel unless they have an authorization code of some sort mm -hmm. that shows that they actually had an assessment done to determine if a work authorization was required or not. So I would say that's key. Another one that is key is the need to track your travelers. So we tend to do a really good job as far as workers are concerned, you know, those assignments abroad. But when it comes to those who are going on those short-term business meetings, uh, there, there isn't, a lot of companies don't have a system in place to really track where their workers are going, which obviously brings up some concerns in regards to risk management. Right, well, and it, it is. You have to know, with duty of care and risk management, you have to know where they're going. Absolutely. The other thing that's interesting, we were just, we just had an education session and we're talking to some U.S. Customs officials and they were also talking about the need to educate your travelers yes. on the purpose of your visit. Absolutely. The number one, whenever we have someone come to us and say, I'm, I'm going to XYZ country for business, we ask them why the canned response is business meetings. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that really mean? What are you going to be doing in these business meetings? And oftentimes when you push, um, a lot more information comes out about mm -hmm. the purpose of travel. So very important to educate your travelers. And you're going to help educate people Absolutely. later today <laughs> or on, on Wednesday, Wednesday, on Wednesday, Wednesday yes. on immigration and compliance. So. What are the key takeaways you hope everybody will take away? Uh, one of the things we're seeing, which actually goes back to your question on trends, is an increase in audits. Mm -hmm. So government enforcing compliance, ensuring that businesses are being compliant. So we're going to talk about that same topic, you know, educating your travelers, ensuring that they understand whether their purpose is business or if it actually falls within the needs of a work authorization. And then what you need to do as a company to remain compliant. What documents do you have to have on file? What information do you have to have at hand? Um, the fact that you need to keep it on file for six years. All of those details because we have seen, I would say, in the past three years, and especially the past six months, a major uptick in the number of government audits happening. So we really want people to leave that workshop just understanding what they need to do to, to be compliant. Right. And that then therefore helps their company be compliant as well. Absolutely. And that's the big big key on that. Absolutely. Well, thank you. It sounds fascinating. Sounds like a great topic. It'll and be fun. Yeah. A little scary, but it'll <laughs> right. be good fun. That's right. Absolutely. So Thank you for joining us today at the on the GBTA broadcast studio live in, in Toronto, 